Hello, everybody, and thanks for watching my video. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Working Body Wednesdays. This is Chris from HealthyConsumer.com, and we are talking about breathing today and why it is critical to do correctly and how you can do it correctly. I've talked about this in some of my other previous videos, and now we're going to tie it into function and how you can use it to improve your posture. Now, the way that you breathe can have several different methods depending on your objective. In this case, we're talking about function. Now, if you look at things like yoga, uh, the breathing objectives in there may be different. Sometimes we use breathing as relaxation. But here we are going to use breathing as a way to improve your posture. I'm going to assume that you have had somebody do some body work to help open up some of your chest. And even if you haven't, this method is still going to help you. But some of the things that we need to consider when we're thinking about the breath are the, the rib cage and the surrounding muscles. The more slumped we get, the more compressed our spine and rib cage become, the tighter the diaphragm at the base of the rib cage becomes. And then it's just a vicious cycle. So the good news is, is you can get out of that. But when we're looking at the rib cage, what we want to think about is often the space in between the ribs. And these ribs are allowed to expand outwards. And if we flip this around to the back side here, you can see that the ribs have a direct articulation with the spine. So those ribs come right into what's called the transverse process of the thoracic vertebrae, all the way down to the 12th rib, all the way from the top of the thoracic spine. So when we're thinking about the rib cage and the expansiveness of this, we want to use the visual of a cylinder expanding in all directions. It expands up and down, and particularly downward when we are thinking about the in-breath. The breath is coming in through the nose, traveling down into the lungs, and all the way to relaxing the pelvic floor. It's also coming outwards and the ribs are floating up like bucket handles and separating from each other. It is not just breathing up into the upper part of the chest here or just in the belly. If you're only belly breathing and your belly is going in and out and you don't see those side ribs coming in and out or any movement or feel any movement on the back, then it's not working for you and you're, you're, you may get a lot of good movement in the belly, but it's, this is gonna remain tight. This is all gonna stay tight unless you get the breath into these areas of your spine and rib cage. So it's such an easy thing to do. It's such a simple thing to do, but we often neglect it. So when you're starting to breathe, we can think of that breath in through the nose, I would suggest lying down to do this. You could start on your back and then see if you can feel equal distribution of the breath going outwards. Place your hands on your chest and see if the breath is going into the sides, pushing your hands away and then coming back together like shrink wrap, just gentle, not hard, breathing in expanding, breathing out. Are you going up into your neck? If you are, try and let all that go. Make space between your ear and the top of the shoulder like you're dropping a sack of groceries and just let all that go. Breathe in, expand into the front, into the back of the rib cage, and relax. Now, if that's hard, and you can only feel uh, certain parts. There's great ways to modify that. There's easy ways to modify that. If, for instance, you place your hands around your sides and you can only feel, let's say, the right side of your rib cage expanding. Let's do this together right now. Go ahead and put your hands around the sides of your rib cage. You're perhaps sitting there at your computer and I want you to breathe into your hands and see if you feel any asymmetry. For me, the left side is expanding easier than the right side is. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna block that side out. I'm gonna block, 
I'm gonna block the left side out by lying on my side, putting a pillow there. And I'm gonna lie on that left side and then I'm gonna breathe into this because I've locked out the left side by putting a pillow there and now I can breathe into those side ribs. It would also help to probably have some tissue work done, have somebody do a deep body massage where they're releasing some of the tissue over here, but of course you need an assessment for that. Let's say you put your hands around your rib cage again and you feel it coming out the front and maybe the sides, but nothing in the back side. Well, what are you gonna do? Go ahead and take another breath. Let's do this again. Okay, so you feel the front moving and the sides, but maybe you don't feel the back side of the rib cage floating up. What do you do? Same concept. Same concept. We're gonna put a pillow underneath the front of the chest. You're gonna lie on your belly, and then you're gonna allow that to expand. Maybe even a couple pillows. A couple pillows. You can breathe into that backside there and allow that to open up. And you're gonna do that for several minutes. I usually recommend 20 breath cycles. And get used to that feeling of the expansion and then the relaxation between each breath. There's a lot of other ways you can modify this. You know, check this out, try it yourself. And then go down to the comment section, leave a comment, let me know how it worked out. Where was the majority of your breath going? Was it all going up into the top of your shoulders? And by the way, that makes the top of the shoulders really tight if you're always breathing into this upper part here and into your neck. Are you only breathing into the sides or one side or the front and not getting any of that expansion into the back of the rib cage? Those are all things you can work on. You can also take a band, a relatively uh, solid band or even a belt around the rib cage to give your body something to feel. You need to feel it. You have to be able to feel the expansion. And this is an area that is very difficult to feel for many people. I have a hard time with this. I had two herniated discs in T6, T7, T7, T8. So it's even harder for me to feel this. I have had to work tirelessly to get this to move well. So. In order to do that, I used a belt. I put it around the whole rib cage, and then I felt and breathed. I was breathing in and expanding outwards into the band and then relaxing. So that's another way you can do something like that. So that pretty much does it for this episode. Hey guys, by the way, thanks so much for joining me on these episodes. I have another video coming out tomorrow on my new series, Learn Your Body Thursdays, where we're going systematically up each joint. We've done, we've done the, uh, the big toe and ankle, and then we're gonna do part one of the knee next. So if you have any knee problems, uh, or you're just more curious about learning about the knee, come back tomorrow on Thursday and that video will be released. Thanks so much for joining me guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, share to anybody you might find valuable. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much and I look forward to seeing you either tomorrow or next week. Have a good one guys.